Hi everyone. So I'm having this exchange right now with a guy who clearly doesn't seem to understand that yes, I am in fact right when I am accusing him of promoting pseudoscience. You can check out my video to him there. Uh, he did not take it well. <laughs> What a shocker. Anyway, uh, he clearly doesn't know what pseudoscience is. He wants me to prove him wrong, and since he's proposing things about science that aren't yet settled, clearly I can't prove him wrong, so apparently I can't prove that what he's doing is pseudoscience. Or something like that. So I figured it's time to make a video talking about what pseudoscience is and how to recognize it. So what is pseudoscience? Well, in order to ask that, first we have to ask what is science? Science is the systematic study of nature using methodological naturalism. It distinguishes itself from plain philosophy in that it's not about making good arguments. It's about making claims that actually work, whether they convince an audience or not, whether they seem intuitive or not, whether you can win debates with them or not. What matters is, do they work? What does the evidence say? If the evidence is with you, that is, the predictions you can make using your description are demonstrably accurate, then it's good. If not, it's bad. We talk about using the principle of falsification. If you make wrong predictions with a model, then it's obviously not an accurate description. It doesn't matter how good it sounds. Conversely, it doesn't matter how bad it sounds. If it gets things right, it clearly works, and you can use it for practical purposes. Pseudoscience is when you try to describe nature without adhering to scientific methodology. In other words, you don't care if it works or not. You are interested in something that people will buy, something that people will swallow, something that you can use to win debates, something that you can use to quell people's curiosity. But it doesn't matter if it works or not. Because once you care if it works, you're doing science. This is why you have to care about whether it works. And you have to do science if you want to be able to make good descriptions of nature, and not just ones that are meant to be sold as easy answers that will never be used for anything. Except maybe scamming people. Pseudoscience is usually about scamming people, either for money or for admiration. You want to increase your social standing by being the wise man the one who can answer questions, the one people come to for answers. But you never care about whether those answers are correct or not. You just want to make sure they come to you and not to anyone else, because then that person gets all the fame instead. That's what it's about. So the question now is, how can you recognize pseudoscience? Here are 10 telltale signs. One, appeals to intuition or logic. Those terms are treated as equivalent. Most people don't understand what logic is, so when you say, just think logically about it, that tends to mean to most people, what does your gut tell you? In other words, logic means intuition. In the context of, you know, actual logic, logic means something else. It's an analysis of internal consistency. But most people don't know what that means. So again, treat logic and intuition as synonymous terms for this purpose. Pseudoscience is meant to be easy to understand. Science is not. Science is meant to work. It doesn't matter if it's easy to understand or not. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. How easy it is to understand or how hard it is to understand doesn't enter into it. But since pseudoscience isn't meant to work, its sole appeal is that it has to be easy to understand. It's much easier to learn pseudoscience than science. It doesn't even require you to take any courses. You can learn all there is about a pseudoscience by watching a YouTube video. So very often, pseudoscience proponents will explicitly 
appeal to intuition or logic and say, just think about this, really, does what they say actually make sense? Do you come from a monkey? Look out at the horizon. Look how flat it looks. Does it really make sense that the Earth is round? Questions like that. They appeal to intuition. They want you to ignore the evidence and listen to your gut. Science never does that. Two, uses fallacious reasoning, especially appeals to emotion. Once again, this has to do with making pseudoscience seem believable. You want to believe in it because it sounds good. You are special. You can have superpowers. You can cure a disease without having to take a shot that hurts or without taking medications that might have side effects. It's just appealing. You want it to be true. You want to be able to think yourself happy or think yourself healthy. You want to be able to drink this snake oil that has no side effects whatsoever, because it has no effects at all, and get better. The appeal to emotion is always there. You want this to be true. But other fallacies happen as well. Circular reasoning is very common, as are statistical fallacies, where you are supposed to draw a bad conclusion from bad data. Three relies on anecdotal evidence and confirmation bias. Yeah, the statistical fallacies. Since there is no good evidence supporting anything pseudoscientific, then it would not be pseudoscience. Bad evidence is all you're ever gonna get. And by bad evidence, I mean evidence that's so bad, it can definitely be used to prove something that isn't true. Confirmation bias means that you remember the hits and ignore all the misses. So something that accidentally gets it right 1% of the time, well, you don't mention the 99% and all of a sudden you have a very good case, right? This is very common in pseudoscience. And when this is pointed out, how do they always respond? Stop being so skeptical. Open your mind. You will never hear that in science. In science, skepticism is always encouraged. That's how you know science is actually an honest search for good descriptions. In pseudoscience, there is no honest search for anything. Four, gurus. In pseudoscientific fields, there are usually gurus that are not supposed to be questioned. They are the founders of the field. They are legends, they are oracles, they are prophets, they are damn near gods. And they are not to be questioned under any circumstances. It's also heresy to add to their work, which is something I'll come back to. In science, you often get this impression, at least from pop science sources, people like Darwin and Einstein are often viewed as some sort of guru-like figures. But in science, no, they're not. They're just people who are well respected because they made great breakthroughs and became famous because of it. But they are not treated as authorities that can't be questioned. Darwin is actually a really lousy source for information about evolution. His work is almost 200 years out of date. These figures are of interest to the history of science, not really to the current state of those fields. But in pseudoscience, gurus are sources of immortal wisdom. Look out for that. Five, no math. Pseudoscience can never provide math in support of anything because that would allow people to make tests that falsify its predictions. Pseudoscientists try to turn this into a good thing by saying you can understand this without having to learn any math. Again, we're back to it's intuitive. But math is what makes many fields of science work because it's the math that allows for predictions to be made. Without the math, you can't make those predictions, so it's unfalsifiable garbage. 
quantum woo, I'm looking at you. Six, misuses scientific words, uses techno babble to give the illusion of being science. Even those who are not very scientifically literate have heard scientific terminology. So in pseudoscience, those terms are very often used. You will hear pseudoscientists yap on about dark energy, dark matter, quantum, frequency, energy. But they will always use those terms incorrectly in an attempt to fool people into thinking that this is actual science. Look, we even use the same words. 7. Makes no falsifiable predictions or makes false predictions and ignores this. I think this one is self-explanatory. If you make testable predictions and update your understanding accordingly, in other words, if you care about the evidence, well, then you're doing science. 8. Treats valid criticism as an attack. In science, criticism is a very important thing. The whole point of peer review is that you submit your work to be criticized. If your work is bad, you want to know what's bad about it so that you can fix it, so that you can advance science. If your work is wrong and someone points out that it's wrong and proves that it's wrong, your reaction should be to go buy this guy a beer. Because together you have moved science forward. You made a claim and that guy hadn't thought of that claim before, so now he tests it and finds that it's wrong. You have both helped move science forward because now we have crossed something off the list of possibilities. This is a good thing. But in pseudoscience, it's never about advancing anything. It's about getting fame and fortune. It's not about it working. So criticism is always viewed as an attack. It's an attempt to bring you down and deny you the money or power that you were after. This is why pseudoscience proponents always hate criticism and in science people love criticism. 9. Appeals to conspiratorial thinking. Of course, at some point every pseudoscience proponent will find themselves in a position of having to explain to others why their idea isn't found in science textbooks. And the inevitable response is, it's being covered up. There's always a conspiracy to keep everything pseudoscientific under wraps, to prevent it from ending up in mainstream scientific literature. In real science, that accusation is never made. And 10. Does not evolve. Because pseudoscience isn't interested in working, it's also not interested in moving forward. Ideas remain the same throughout the ages. This is sometimes actually a selling point. Science, science, they can't make up their minds. I already know the truth. Remember how creationists say this about how the Bible was right from the beginning? No, if you don't change when the evidence comes in, you know you're wrong and you are choosing to stay wrong. When a supposed scientific field does not evolve at all, that guarantees that it's not actually science. Even fields that are well established have new details added all the time. But in pseudoscience, adding to the teachings of the great guru is often viewed as heresy. So there you have it. That's what pseudoscience is, and those are 10 easy ways to detect it. See ya.